Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's Miami office down in sunny South Florida. Today's date is Saturday, July the 20th, 2013, and here is this week's Week in Review brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. Before I get into the video here, I want to remind you guys to go check out the website, WallStreetTrading.com. A lot of free information on the site for you guys there. At the same time, we are off. We are now offering our Active Traders course. If you're interested in taking that course, you can contact me at ccooper at WallStreetTrading.com for more details. Also, if you're interested in joining our prop firm, you can contact me for more details as well. And uh, if you don't know if prop trading is for you, contact me as well and I can tell you the difference between uh, I can explain to you some of the pros and cons between uh, retail and retail trading and prop trading aside from that folks let's go ahead and jump into the video here uh, this is a week in review video so this will be an extended video going through all the uh, different sectors markets uh, macro stuff everything folks you want to make sure you tune into the video and share the video to your uh, your trading friends and anybody that you know that's interested in the in the financial markets, so they can see what's going on. A lot of interesting things going on out there that we're going to talk about here shortly. So let's go ahead and jump to the charts here, starting off with the monthly chart of the SPY. You can see the monthly. You can see we're breaking. Uh, you know we broke out back here over those that uh, over those all-time highs back here in April. All right, and now we have uh, you know now we have some nice uh, consecutive closes above that level there. And so far for the monthly chart for this month, it's looking pretty good. If we close like this, all right, this is we'll be forecasting that we're going to get some uh, some more momentum to the top side, which I believe is to come because there's really nothing <coughs> out there showing us that the market's ready to reverse yet <coughs> at all. So you really want to just stick with the trend. All right, starting off with the SPY weekly chart. All right, one thing that I highlighted to you guys uh, last, uh, you know, last uh, not last week, but one thing I highlighted to you guys in the after the bell market summary video on Thursday, I believe it was that we're back at the trend line resistance as you guys know we had that little forecasted trend line from the lows that we made back here all right this little low right here this low this high that allows us to draw the channel we hit those levels so they are respecting those trend lines and then when we went to the top of the channel which was a forecasted target we did have some resistance off that level we pulled back all the way to the back test of the breakout from the range <coughs> from the range that we had back here back in April and uh, March and now we're back at that trend line so a couple of things to watch out for is if we break over these highs and then we reverse right back below it really want to see a break and hold above 169 like a nice strong hold above 169 a nice bid right we're a, I wouldn't say we're, we're not a, we're a little bit extended from the 20 day moving average down here we have had a uh, we have had a nice little one two three four week run, but again, there's still some momentum in this market. There's a lot of stocks out there that are uh, doing actually doing pretty well. So taking a look at the SPY daily chart again, we're at this little possible area of resistance from the highs. This you know it's not a double top. I would say until we maybe pull back below 166, this little support level down there, then we can say okay that was a double top. Aside from that, right now it's just a uh, chart that's at resistance. And it's above that key 167 level of support that happened last week Thursday from the gap up. So as long as we can hold above 167 going forward, I think we can see this nice momentum continue to, in the markets here. Remember, we're using the moving averages as a gauge. We have our rising 5, our rising 8, our rising 20. Our short-term fast-moving averages are uh, trending pretty well. So until that changes, we're going to stick with the trend. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, starting off with the monthly chart. We're looking at these bigger time frames here, breaking down the uh, the big picture for our weekend review video here. Monthly chart, NASDAQ. Remember, the NASDAQ had a little sell-off from the tech bubble sell-off down here and uh, over here in 2000. I was not trading then. I, I hope some of you guys that were trading then were able to capitalize on this market to the downside. If not, I hope you're capitalizing back to the upside here. But anyways, the main level that we had broken down from uh, on the sell-off here was... Uh, right here at let's see at eighty two dollars and fifty cents or so that's ox that's actually the sixty one point eight percent retracement of this move down all right and one now that we're finally above the fifty percent level that's the next target so we do have about uh you know we do have a, a good eight percent plus left that this uh the nasdaq can move up for the year um, can it happen this year possibly can we'll have to wait and see um you know we'll We'll take a look at some of the charts here shortly as well to see what tech stocks are looking pretty good to uh, continue high and participate with the trend that the market's doing right now. So the Triple Q monthly chart, 
again, uh, you know, the next main level of resistance is right there on 82. Why is that? Well, let me show you guys real quick here. Um, you take a look at all the consolidation that happened before we broke down. It happened right at the 8237 level. Okay, so <clears throat> since this price action was kind of like a clean move down, there's really no congestion. That means that this price action over here to the right of the screen from uh, the recent action could have a nice little smooth move higher. All right, like a little nice little grind high without any uh, trouble reaching to that, without any trouble going to the 82 unless you know, really something changes. Um, from the daily chart, all right, wait, did I go to the weekly chart? All right, from the weekly chart here, you can see we had a nice little steep trend line. Oh, one second. Nice little trend line from the lows that we made back here in November to the lows that we made back here in uh, December. And as you can see how the price action was holding above that key trend line. We did a little shakeout right here. And then we got right back above it. I'm actually going to adjust this trend line now, though, to that low right there. This low, and this low, and this low. To kind of give you that a little bit of better, uh, better angle there of what's going on. Nice little move up, move back down. So either way, had a nice little pause, pause week, I would say, on the on the uh, triple Qs. It all really happened on Friday from the big gap up. Anybody that got long. Uh, the triple Q's from back here um, last Thursday, or Friday, or even some of Thursday's action, they're pretty much stuck in a uh, losing position right now from the gap down that happened off of the earnings reports that we had from Microsoft and Google, which knocked the NASDAQ futures down a lot after hours when the markets closed on Thursday, after the cash closed, and uh, we opened up lower on Friday. So you can see, if we get any more selling pressure, anybody that's still trying to hold their longs, from uh, these prices up here, if we break below this low right here, I think they'll sell their longs, and then we'll have people that are looking to get short the triple Qs for a move down here, uh, down towards the 73, uh, 50 level. Okay. Now, if we don't, all right, if we don't break these lows and we hold this low support from the gap open price there, uh, you know, we should start making our move back towards the highs. You know, then that would be this would have been a buying opportunity. So we're going to have to wait to see uh, on Monday and Tuesday how this holds up and how this uh, market tries to recover from that gap up if it tries to recover. All right, that's one definitely one thing that we're looking out there for. Um, IWM, the Russell 2000 here, strong chart. Again, making all-time highs this week. The strongest chart out there. If you take a look at the monthly time frame, all right, this was the first uh, index to actually uh, make all-time highs, as you guys know. Not only that, it was the first index to you know, well, was an index. This index actually broke out at the start of the year. There, okay. While other ones are making new all-time highs now, uh, this one is, uh, you know, has has had a nice little run up there, and it's still moving higher. You got the monthly chart, nice little trend in the monthly chart, showing that momentum still in there, cruising above the fast-moving average. You can see the distance between the moving averages are moving apart, further apart. That's real. That's a real bullish sign. So the monthly is looking decent. The weekly broke out of the range that we had back here, pulled back, back test held, and now we have one, two, three, four consecutive higher closes. You guys can see down here at the bottom of the chart, four higher consecutive closes, higher closing prices. That's what this tool is right here. This little indicator I have down there tracks the closing prices, makes a green dot. If it makes a higher, if it makes a higher close than the prior uh, candle or prior close, and it makes a red. Uh, close a red a red dot if it made a lower close in the prior close uh, kind of helps us out with the trend it's actually a pretty helpful tool especially on an intraday basis all right so um the IWM looks good on the weekly chart and the daily chart of course looking pretty good all right you want to uh keep an eye on these trend lines here these short to moving averages and this one is getting a little bit extended from that 20 moving average right there all right that's right there okay See the distance? That's getting a little bit extended, but so then, that, therefore, we're going to be watching these short-term moving averages. Now, people that have been in this trend the whole time, they're probably trailing their stops by these, using these short-term moving averages. All right, and then they're going to start selling once this thing starts to, once price action starts to go below these fast-moving averages, we'll be looking for a move down. But at the moment, the trend is up. Use those moving averages as your gauge. Um, the main level of support now is going to be from the breakout area of 99.88, which is all the way down there. All right. Now I wanted to go over the VIX real quick because the VIX did sell off again on uh, Friday. 
We talked about the VIX breaking below 1350 and holding in our After the Bell Market Summary videos that you can find on our YouTube channel under My Wall Street TV. We talked about the VIX was to break and hold below this 1350 area. We could see a move back down towards 1250. Well, that's exactly what happened. Now, if we break below 12, this pivot low right there, we could see a move back down, all the way back down towards 11 which could be in the cards because it just doesn't seem like there's any fear in the market. Unless some type of catalyst comes that brings some fear in the market, people are just going to keep on buying equities, buying pullbacks, and you know things like that. But uh, another interesting chart out there that I want to show you guys is the uh, dollar chart. All right, The dollar is in this nice big megaphone pattern. All right, This is usually a, a volatile pattern because you usually get that move at the top, the bottom of the range, the top of the range, the bottom of the range, the top of the range. Now the next move down, if this plays out, we'll go back down towards the bottom of the range, make a good new low, and then if that happens and we hold below that low, then we're going to start selling back off down towards these levels right here. But the dollar is possibly telling us that this next leg down of the dollar is going to be the one that knocks it in the coffin. We'll see. And if that happens, we definitely want to make sure we take a look at these companies that get affected um, by a declining dollar and these hard assets that are going to go up like the precious metals, the uh, gold stocks, and stuff like that, if this dollar really starts to get some selling pressure. So keep an eye on that. You take a look at the monthly chart on the dollar. We've been uh, having these little fake breakouts above 83.25 or so that have not been able to hold up. And, um, you know, that's an ugly tail right there that actually took out these highs. That could be a little trap action. Then we can move back to the downside. Take a look at the weekly chart. You got a little fake breakout two times in a row in a short amount of time here. Try to break out over 83, failed, came right back. Went back up in a in a fast at a fast pace back up to those highs, made new highs, and got rejected again. That's kind of telling you that people are actually using those opportunities for those rides to get short the dollar. All right, and um, if we take out this pivot low right here, it could really get ugly. So keep an eye on the dollar. It's, it's trying to tell us something right now, which uh, I think it's trying to tell us it wants to go lower and uh, make these new um, these uh, new lows right here. Well, this new lows from underneath this pivot right here break below. 80, 60, and make a move down towards 80. Obviously, we still have a lot more time. Um, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time to get there. But we continue to see this dollar declining. All right, then that's going to be my target down there towards that 80. Target right now, the dollar I would say is maybe right here at 8160. A little pivot action right there. <clears throat> what else? So let's go and take a look at the commodities here. Starting off with crude oil, which has been a, a you know a, a rock star commodity. We've been talking about crude oil breaking out of this little triangle pattern by the end of the third quarter. It actually happened at the beginning of, of the third quarter. If you go back and take a look at our YouTube videos from you know a couple months ago, uh, you know we've been talking about this move and it worked out pretty well. And if you do the right analysis and and a move works as you expected, you know that's something to feel good about. Same thing, uh, you know you should always feel good about uh, a move, a call that you made. All right, when you're doing your analysis for your trade and it worked out good off your analysis, that means that you're doing something right. Okay, so aside from that, let's see, aside from that uh, action right there, crude oil, let's take a look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart, same thing here. You can see we're breaking out of the triangle pattern. We broke over that 98 level pretty nice here. And the next target on this crude oil is up here towards 110. We break past 110. We have 115. We break past 115, guys, and this thing could really um, take off. And I'm not sure about you guys, but I really don't want to see that because uh, we're going to see those higher price gases. We're going to see those higher gas prices at the pump. Um, you know, I was pumping gas the other day, and I paid 3.58 for regular. And two weeks before that, or a week before that, I was paying like 3.40. So um, yeah, it could it could start getting ugly at the, at the gas pumps. So you want to watch out for that. Uh, so that's crude oil. Taking a look at gold, gold futures forward slash GC. Gold futures still hanging around here, but one thing that looks good on this chart all right, is the fact that we're trying to build a higher base now. All right, you can see we're consolidating underneath this 1300 resistance level, and we've been consolidating right here for a range. All right, so that's kind of giving them investors, and traders, I would say. A uh, good level to work off of. They want to get long this name on a break over 1300. So you got here a stop around 12. I would say call it 1270. If it breaks over 1300, 1300, you're going to be risking about 30 dollars to make a move. 30 bucks, you want to at least see 60. You're going to be forecasted at least a two to one trade will be up here towards the 1360 level, which could happen because it could be a back test of the uh, breakdown level that occurred. All right, and you know that's. 
normally happens when you break past the key level, you get an official back test. If you don't get an official back test, it usually rise up towards that level, and they sell it right in front of that level, depending on how many people, I would say, are trying to get out the trade before it gets to that target, because you know, it may not get to that target. So they try to get out in front of that target. But uh, aside from that, gold looks like it may get a little pop-up next week, so we're keeping a close eye on gold. Take a look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart still has a lot of technical damage done on it. All right, and um, yeah, over that 1300, this thing can have a nice little bar next week. At least try to break past 1300 and give you a nice little cash flow trade in that GLD or some of those gold, uh, gold ETFs or those gold stocks out there. All right, monthly chart, same thing. 1200 is actually a decent level of support down there. That actually not 1200, but that 1180 level that we held prior resistance held a support, held a support again. So let me take this out. And there we go. Looks pretty interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bars kind of with that downward momentum there. <clears throat> so keep an eye on gold next week. Take a look at the gold miners, GDX. GDX, these gold miner stocks are actually trying to catch a bid a little bit here. Um, if the GDX could get back over 2632, that would be pretty interesting. We want to see the GDX break above 2632 and then hold above 2632. Taking a good look at the weekly chart, which I should look at this first. Taking a look at the weekly chart, you had a buy trigger over this prior three-week bar highs here. And um, you know, if you get over this 26 area, this thing can make a nice move up. Monthly chart, back down at this demand zone. All right, you guys can see back here in 2008, they were buying the gold miners back at these prices. Now we're back right here. And this could be a nice entry for some of these stocks. So take a look at the action here. All right, up, down. If this is, in fact, going to be a range, all right, then this would actually be a decent area to start picking up some uh, some of those stocks. Now, we haven't, had, we haven't got a uh, monthly buy trigger yet, but next month, if we break over this month's high down here, that would be a buy trigger. We could see some nice cash. Uh, start to inflow into some of these um, some of these uh, mining stocks. <clears throat> Let's take a look at silver SLV. Not a big fan of trading silver. Uh, had a little tight range. Still has a lot of damage uh, to recover on the chart. If it breaks over 1950, it could get some interesting action. I wouldn't be interested in, in SLV until it gets over 1950. All right. And the weekly chart, downtrend, monthly chart, sitting right on top of that uh, flat. 200 day uh, simple exponential moving average there copper forward slash HG copper futures here alright sitting right on top of the 100 day simple moving average exponential moving average on the monthly at the support level from the lows that were made back here in October of 2011 <clears throat> take a look at the weekly chart Weekly chart trying to find some support down here around three, and then um, taking a look at the daily chart. Daily chart starting to stabilize here. Remember, if we're actually growing. The economy is growing. We want to see the growth commodities move up together. So we want to see copper move up with crude oil, and not just crude oil by itself, because then it could be telling us something different. Maybe there's something going on over going going on overseas that we don't know about. All right, or you know, maybe people are expecting some type of you know some type of um, big moving crude oil. Based off of some other factors, if it was on, if it was on, on based off of uh, the economy getting better from a global uh, scale, and you know, from over here in the states, we want to see copper moving up with uh, with the crude oil, just to show you that they're moving in tandem a bit for that growth concept. But um, copper over one, oh, copper over three dollars and twenty cents looks pretty good. It's gonna make a move back up towards three thirty. That's the next resistance level that we have from before. All right, so uh, let's see. Copper, <clears throat> it's good. So you got copper, crude, silver, gold miners. Uh, did I miss anything from the commodity side? We took a look at the dollar. We took a look at the VIX. We took a look at the indices. Um, let's see here. I think that's about it, guys. Let's go and take a look at some stocks now. Um, I haven't done a week in review video in for like the past three weeks here, so bear with me if I'm jumping all over the place. And this is not what you're used to seeing in my other videos because I usually kind of flow through this a little bit smoother but uh, it's alright we're still getting the points across here Apple ugly day on Friday was down uh, one and a half percent here they have earnings coming out next week Tuesday so you know there's gonna be a lot of um, 
trade op trading opportunities in the stock on an intraday basis and on a little swing trade basis here. Again, I wouldn't be buying Apple up here. It's already moved from 390 all the way to 435 and uh, looks like they're going to try to start selling some profits, taking some profits before they report their earnings for any traders or investors that have been long this name from down here or somewhere over here. Uh, Amazon, again, this has been a nice little strong tech stock. All right. Uh, it's not pulling back at the moment. Still hang on to these moving averages right here, but it looks pretty good. Again, if this thing could pull back towards 295, I think this would be a, a, a great uh, buying opportunity in the name. If Apple was to report bad numbers and the tech sector was to gap down off that number, I think Amazon would be the stock that you want to buy on that dip if that scenario was to happen. Either way, it's looking pretty strong. You take a look at the monthly chart. The target on Amazon's up here towards uh, 324, this upper upper band of the channel right there. Take a look at the weekly chart. Nice engulfing candle. Had a little pause week this week. If it's real strong, it will go next. We can do a breakout. But if not, it may need to chop around a bit more, consolidate off this nice expansion bar that it had from the breakout over the uh, February highs there. All right, and then we have the monthly chart, which I just showed you guys. Right, yeah, everything looks good. Um, let's see here. IBM, they had earnings uh, on Thursday, or I should say on Wednesday after the close. Not sure which one it was, but the stock gapped up, moved right back down, not looking strong at all. You want to watch this key trend line that's going to be coming in IBM right there. Remember what happened last time for the earnings and the gap down? Last earnings, they gapped down. This earnings, they gapped up and then sold off the next day. So the stock's looking pretty weak, guys. If the tech stocks start to pull in, um, I would definitely be looking at IBM for a uh, for a, a candidate for the sell side. As you can see, it can move back down here towards 190, maybe back down here towards 188. So keep that one on watch. All right, and then I want to take a look at Microsoft and Intel and Google. So I've got a couple more tech stocks to go through here, folks. Uh, Microsoft they had earnings as well on Thursday after the close and. I'm not sure what the numbers were, but the investors and the traders didn't really take it too kindly, so the stock got smacked down pretty hard. But at the same time, why would you be buying uh, Microsoft up here after it had this nice little fast power move, all right, and then rallied up again and made a new high? You know, you would have been better off buying it down here, so now, if, or somewhere over here. So if it did gap down the earnings report, you know, you're back at your break-even cost. But again, we're active traders, so that doesn't affect us. But for some of you guys out there that are watching this video, you guys are swing traders. Uh, some of you guys that may be swing traders out there, you know, you shouldn't chase a stock all the way up here after it's done this, especially if it broke past these highs and was not able to hold above the highs. So now Microsoft sold off. <clears throat> it bounced right off the 200-day uh, exponential moving average. But if it breaks below Friday's lows, this thing can probably move back down towards like the 30. Uh, thirty dollar area where we have all these gaps at over here. So keep Microsoft on watch. Uh, Intel Semiconductor had some decent action in the in the names this week. Intel gap down from earnings. The stock has been a weak stock. If it breaks below Friday's lows, then it breaks below this pivot low that we made last week, uh, Wednesday. All right, this thing could get some sell side action. And I want to take a look at Google with you guys real quick here. But you know, tech sector has been pretty strong, so. I know we got a little pullback from the earnings, but don't get too, uh, you know, don't get too, um, I don't know the word for it, but don't get too, uh, I would say, excited on the short side of these tech names because they could still have some dip buys in those names, which I think they do. Again, the sectors that have been on fire have been the tech sector, the financials, and now we're actually starting to see some money rotate back into the basic material sector. And again, if that dollar chart sells off, we're going to see more money possibly come out of some of these tech stocks that have had nice runs for the past three months and start to influence some of these commodity names that have been kind of trading sideways and slightly higher without any momentum in them. All right, but uh, Google, you know, gap down from the earnings. They recovered pretty well. Um, I think I like the company, but just because I like the company doesn't mean that it's going to go up, of course, <laughs> or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I, like, I, like, I like their business model. I like what they're doing. I think Google's a good company. And I think that uh, it just may need more time before it tries to break out <coughs> and make its way back, or it should make its way um, not back to a thousand, but to a thousand. I do think this could be a thousand dollar stock sometime, but again, we'll see how it trades. But Google gapped down from earnings, and uh, you want to see what it does on Monday, see if it gets any fall through the, of the uh, gap fill action there. All right, let's talk about the financials. All right, financials. Bank of America was up over seven percent this week. Take a look at the monthly chart. All right, strong stock, looks pretty good. Has an air pocket right here. 
All right, has an air pocket right here. If it breaks over, if it breaks over 1475, all right, it can make a nice move up towards all right 18. So keep an eye on this right here. It looks pretty good. If it go break above 15 and hold, this thing can make its way up towards 18 by the end of the year. Um, believe it or not, daily chart looks pretty good. Sorry, weekly chart looks pretty good. Uh, daily chart looks pretty good. Keep it on these moving averages here. Uh, Wells Fargo, again, strongest bank out there, right? Take a look at the monthly chart of this stock. I w we just had a meetup this uh, morning in our Miami office here. I had a whole bunch of traders in the area come by. We talked the markets and everything. And I told them I told them to look at all the financials on the monthly time frame and bring up Wells Fargo. And that's how you know this is a strong stock. Made new all-time highs on Friday. And uh, this is should start picking up momentum. This could be a stock that you could look to buy it on dips going forward on a day-to-day -day basis. Anytime it sells off, just buy it on dips, buy it on dips because it's looking pretty good. You probably have some fund managers that are going to start putting this into their portfolio and getting out some of those other garbage of financial stocks that really aren't trading that, that good as this name. Um, again, just keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on these moving averages. Keep an eye on that trend that it has intact there. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan was up a little bit this week, up 2%. This one made new... Uh, do 52 week highs here and if you take a look at the monthly chart it broke above a key level right here at 55 next resistance on it isn't up here until like around 58 so 58 and then uh, 62 so there's still some more decent uh, upside potential in JP Morgan of course here daily chart looks pretty good trending along pretty nice we talked about the stock hold, holding above this 5450 level then breaking this little momentum downtrend line nice little break there nice little pause day on Friday and the financials are strong on next week, on Monday or Tuesday, or any time next week. J.P. Morgan would be a go-to candidate as well for a move to the top side. All right, um, healthcare. I want to talk about the healthcare because take a look at XLV. All right, XLV looking pretty strong. Take a look at the monthly. Take a look at the weekly. All right, now take a look at the stocks in the sector. You got Amgen, A-M-G-N. Nice uh, breakout bar on Friday. This one can have some nice little fall through momentum on Monday. Take a look at J and J, all right, which is in the XLV Johnson and Johnson. All right, looks pretty good. All right, look for some fall through in that name. Take a look at Pfizer PFE. All right, looks pretty good down there as well. This could be a nice little move up and pivot low to work off to get long for move back up there towards these uh, 2960s and up towards these highs up here. All right, um, uh, Pfizer. You have G I L D, which I think I just said. Nope, and GILD. GILD has earnings coming out next week. But these these uh, healthcare stocks are looking pretty good. So you want to have them on your radar. Uh, we had a nice little move up in uh, GE on Friday from the earnings report. We actually traded that one in the room as well. Our live active trader room, uh, mywallstreettv.com. If you want to get access to the room, just send me an email, ccooper at wallstreettrading.com, and I'll give you the details. Or you could fill out the form on the right-hand side of our homepage to get access to that. GE, uh, Bank of America, I uh, talked about that. Uh, energy stocks are doing pretty well. You had Slummer J, they reported earnings on Friday. We traded that one as well. This one is making new, let's see here, new 52 week highs. Next target on this one is all the next resistance level on this one is at, let's see, 85.77 and then all the way up here at 92.42. So this one could definitely start getting some traction here, guys. Um, I would keep an eye on Slummer J going forward. I may need to may need to consolidate a bit and build some type of base up here because from the big gap up it had, but Slumber J looks pretty good. All right, you had some decent action and uh, Chevron was up over two and a half percent this week, well two point three percent this week. Uh, next target on this one's back up towards these highs right here, one twenty seven forty two looks pretty good. You have Exxon Mobil. All right, making new fifty two week highs. Take a look at the monthly chart on this one. This one looks pretty good, especially if it starts trading above. 96 guys. This Exxon Mobil definitely a stock that you want to have in your portfolio right now, in my opinion. Right, you want to try to get a good entry on it, but either way, the stock is forecasted to go much higher. Uh, let's see here, Conoco Phillips, COP. You know, Devon Energy, DVN, you know, SWN, RC, COG looks pretty good. Keep an eye on COG. This one looks like it wants to break out. You have a nice little tight range right here. They also did a shakeout. They trapped some shorts in there. So anybody that's maybe still holding on the expectation that they think it's going to roll over, 
like they did right here when they got short. They're going to have to start covering their position as this thing's getting ready to break out. COG, that's another stock we have on the radar. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things moving and shaking, guys. Uh, Tesla, a lot of traders were trading Tesla last week. TSLA had a sell-off last week from the Goldman Sachs report that came out, and now it's back, you know, to recover at least half of that move to the downside that it had. Um, what else? Uh, I want to take a look at Yahoo. Yahoo had a good week this week as well. <coughs> nice little move up. A little shake and bake action on Thursday. Sell side on Friday. And, you know, may need to pull back to these moving averages a bit off this. Uh, maybe, maybe need a, it may need to pull back into this uh, rising um, 2850 moving average right here. What else? What else? Uh, Morgan Stanley. I didn't get a chance to look at that bank with you guys. Morgan Stanley. A uh, little pause. A little uh, spinning candles right there. Not really doing much. Kind of consolidating. It's this one as well. May need to wait for the moving average to catch up to or pull back a little bit. And I want to take a look at CHK. I want to see if CHK broke out over that 23 level here. And then CHK, guys. CHK over 23 looks pretty good a lot of these uh, alternative energy stocks or alternative energy from from crude oil you know your natural gas your uh, solar companies if crude oil keeps on going higher these names are going to get some buyers in them so you want to keep them on your radar aside from that folks I think I talked enough here hope you guys enjoyed the video have a great day I'll catch you guys on Monday for the midday market update right there in the morning actually you know what Monday I'm gonna try to do a uh, pre-market uh, video and get that series up and running here. Have a great day, folks. Enjoy your weekend. Cheers.